おはよう Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to Atsuki. It really feels good to say this. It's been a while, and I have some stuff to explain. But let me tell you, I'm gonna start building a toll booth, and you can just watch me do that while I explain what has been going on and why it's been such a while. Now, I always said that my upload schedule was gonna be sporadic, but I didn't know it was gonna be this sporadic. After the last episode, I took a little break. I was like, I'm gonna take a little break, work on my music, but that break actually became a really long break. And the thing that happened is my main music production YouTube channel got hacked by a cryptocurrency scam. And basically they hacked my channel, they started streaming to my channel, and they also started removing all the videos, which later I found out they just unlisted the videos, so they were still there and everything was fine. In the end, but it was a really stressful moment, and it also meant that I had to completely wipe my computer, wipe my operating system, and since my music production stuff is basically my work, it was my main focus to get back up and running with that. I was not able to do any streams for a couple of weeks, I was not able to work on my music, I was not able to do anything basically, so. I was already glad that I was back up and running with my music stuff, and I was glad that I was able to stream again with that. So that kind of, you know, got me out of it. And I also, well, kind of lost touch with all the mods and keeping up to date with all of that because honestly, I had a lot more other stuff on my, on my, on my mind at that point. So after a while, I did kind of wanted to start picking up the game again. But it was really daunting to go in and recover the save game. So I tried, and the first thing that happened is when I loaded up the game, is I loaded my save game and a whole bunch of stuff was broken, it wasn't working properly, things were not loading, and I started looking into things and I noticed that a lot of the mods had changed. There were a whole bunch of new mods that came out that fixed a bunch of issues, and just in general, there were a whole bunch of new things that I had to basically go through and get back up to date with. So after I did all of that, um, or actually before I did all of that, I kind of, because of that, quit the game again and basically thought, well, that's too much work. I don't really feel like doing that. And I basically lost track of it again. And it took me another two months before I was like, okay, let's let's give this a shot. I tried a lot of things to make everything work again, but... Long story short, I wasn't capable of fully recovering the save game. I uh, did a whole bunch of things, tried everything, but it was just... I could get everything to load, but eventually, when I started working on the next episode, I, I was building stuff, I noticed more things of vehicles not spawning, other issues creeping in that I had no clue what was going on, and I was like, I can try and make things work, but let's be honest. In episode 5, I did a massive amount of terraforming and that's kind of when I restarted the series in episode 6 so the previous episode we built a train station plaza and that was kind of like again the first thing that we built on the map so not really that much was built yet so I thought let me try something else let me try and at least recover the map itself because I did a lot of terraforming and I was really happy with how the map turned out so I was like let me see if I can at least recover that. So I was able to use mod tools to load up my save game into the map editor. So that's the save game with all the broken stuff and all the issues. 
I then basically just took that save game in, in the map editor and I used that to export the height map of that save game. I then exited out of the game, loaded up a new game, or loaded up a new map editor map, I should say, and imported the height map back into that new map. That way I was able to make sure that nothing of the old save was left in this new one, and everything should be working again. And it did. So then I just quickly did all the trees again, which obviously I didn't put as much time into as I did in the terraforming episode. I did a lot of effort into doing like the mountaintops and all of that, and making sure there's like smaller bushes near the top of the mountains. I didn't really do that because I thought we could probably do that in the series itself as the series progresses. And also, most of that stuff is going to be in the distance anyway. So how often are we going to be looking at that up close? Might not even be needed to have that much detail in the mountain tops, but maybe in the future for like cinematic shots, this could be cool. But for now, just quickly did that and basically loaded up the save game again. Now, obviously, we're on a blank map. So I read it some stuff, I read it the highways, made sure they're in a good spot now, I like where everything is, and I started getting into some of the new mods. So you can see that there's a trumpet interchange that we're starting here, and that interchange was already built when we started the episode. I did that off camera because I basically just wanted to get into it, play around a little bit with some of the mods, and I can tell you one mod we're going to use a lot during the series is the network multi-tool. You'll see me use it every now and then, but we'll probably do an episode like making an interchange or something like that where we're going to be using that mod a lot. It's such a handy tool. The parallel row tool in it is really great. We don't need that mod anymore. That was sort of like health working. Um, we now can just do it with the network multi-tool and just laying down roads parallel, but also like putting fences besides it. It's just so much easier now all these options to connect roads with curves and loops, and it's it's absolutely great, um, especially in combination with node controller and intersection marking tool. It's just, it's it, it's really made the game into so much easier, or it's just become a lot more easier to do stuff that I would spend hours on, like months ago, or like, let's say, half a year ago. So it's going to be fun. Um, I don't know how many episodes I'm going to do. I don't know how often the episodes are going to come out, like I said. This is not my main channel, this is just something I like doing for fun. When I'm feeling like not really working on music, I can do this and still be creative. So that's why I do this. And yeah, we'll see where it goes. So we're getting started now with the uh, area in front of the toll booth. We're sort of like done with the toll booth itself. Uh, didn't really explain too much about it. We can, uh, well, we can see what's going on, right? It's 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 pretty clear what I've been doing. I've just been making a toll booth. It's completely decorational. There's no actual tolls being generated, but I'm fine with that. I haven't seen anybody who made a modded version of a toll booth that actually generates toll. I think there's one, but I don't really like the look of it because it doesn't look Japanese. So I have these Japanese toll booth assets, but they're not functional. So we're just going to deal with it. Now, I'm going to make this really big commercial area in front of it, where we have some good big stores. We have a big supermarket that obviously will provide a lot of the food, I guess, to this town. So, yeah, we're start starting with a smaller town. I should probably say that I'm not starting with the downtown right now because I don't. I just don't want to make another downtown train station plaza right now. I, I want to do something else first. So I took inspiration from an area north of Tokyo. I just dropped a pin on the map. And I basically just looked around a little bit until I found this little area in Gunma. And I took some Google Earth shots. So we're going to go into those right now, I think. We should be going into it after this intersection. And yeah, it's just an area. It's just a small, sort of like farming rural town around this highway exit. So there's a toll booth. You can see it. It's basically just the exact thing that what I just built. I just copied it. And the same thing goes for the area around it. There's a commercial area. The layout of the parking lot is going to be a little bit different. But you can see the resemblance of this thing. Now you can see there's on both sides of the highway toll booth exit. There's commercial. We're only going to do it on one side. Because I think there's a, so much parking in real life in this area. And I don't want to have that much parking here. But you can see the farms as well. That's kind of what we're going to copy later on in the episode as well. We're going to make this farming community and these farm fields... When you come right off the highway, you're just driving straight up against these farm fields, which gives us a nice 
opportunity to place some billboards there as well and do some like advertisements. And in general, this is just, I think it's just more like a rural farming community what we're making here. Maybe these farms are providing goods to the shops. Like the supermarket that I'm placing down later is actually a fresh food store. So maybe they are supplying fresh foods to that store. Now, obviously, in game, it's not going to work like that because the store is not an industry type of building. It's just a regular commercial building. So it's not going to work with the industry DLC, which the farms will actually do, but we'll get into that in a bit. Now, I should probably also tell you about, talk about some of the stuff that I'm probably going to change going forward. I had to do a lot of editing for the episodes up until now. The edit, Every single episode was so much editing work. Even this one is still quite a bit of work editing, but already a little bit less because I'm cutting out quite a bit, quite a bit of stuff. Like this thing that you're seeing right now, I'm making a parking lot and I'm making more than one parking lot. We're going to make a couple of ones, but I'm not going to show you all of them. And I want to keep doing that going forward. Just cut out things that I don't think you really need to see because it's just something that I've already done. Or it's something that's just done a lot of times. You might only see the first couple of couple of moments from it, but then after that I just cut the rest. Because I just don't want to have to worry about editing down all that footage into a little bit. And I might even just not record parts. And there's in this episode as well, there's a couple of moments where you might see a couple of buildings pop up. There might suddenly be a couple of extra houses somewhere. And that's and that just happens, you know, because I, I don't want to have to worry about dealing with like a hundred hours of gameplay per episode, which some of the episodes up until, up until now were. Like the last one was a lot, seriously, a lot of gameplay footage. And it took me so much time to edit it. So... I want to try and get better at that. I want to try and at least figure out how I can get that, you know, a little bit better. And that would hopefully also help with the output of the episodes. So the city, or the city, <laughs> that's a cool one. Um, the channel actually grew quite fast. I, I was really surprised with how quick this channel went from zero to 11,000 subscribers. And I'm really generous for that. So I want to at least try and put some more episodes out. So... One thing that I've been thinking about is it could maybe be cool if every now and then I do an episode where I just detail a single block or like I just make a single block of houses where I put a lot of detail into all the gardens and stuff, which I'll show you a little bit in the, uh, in this episode as well, how that would look, because at the end of this episode, I'm doing that. But it could be cool to maybe just do that for just a single episode. And then I also can, you know, make it a little bit more closer to the real-time speed, maybe speed it up twice as fast. Um, this is sped up like to 600, 800% of the normal speed. So that will be a lot easier to watch, I guess. And then I can maybe put like 20 to th 25 minutes into an episode, maybe making a single street or a single row of houses and then detailing all the gardens. And I think that could be cool as well would show you all of you a little bit more in detail like how that would come together i've also been thinking more about streaming stuff um it would be possible probably but i do have to be honest that the way how i play and how detailed i play the the frame rate is never going to be going to be good it's going to be a slow frame rate and streaming is probably going to be really taxing on my computer i don't have a secondary computer for streaming so all my streams basically happen from one computer and that's the same computer that's running the game so if the game is like asking a lot of cpu power and asking a lot of my ram then that might give us issues with streaming so i have to you know be totally honest about that i don't think i'll be streaming anytime soon i might stream some other games every now and then like i did a stream recently on my other channel where i played super liminal and it was a really fun stream i basically streamed for about five hours I think and four and a half of that was playing the game and I finished the game in a single stream and it was really cool it was a lot of fun and I might want to do that on this channel instead so if you guys are up for that let me know in the comments below we're getting to this really cool area here I should probably talk about what's going on on the screen right now I'm making this empty lot so I had this weird shaped lot in this parking area this commercial district and I thought what can I put here without really having to do too much effort because I could put some shops there, but then it's going to be, oh, I got to have to detail the backs of the shop and make it all look nice. And it's this weird shape. So it's never going to be 
easy. You're always going to have to do it custom. So I was like, how can I do this nice? And I was like, what if I just make an empty lot? As if there's just a place here where maybe in the future business could be. But for now, there's just an empty barren lot with some weeds and some dirt. And I was like, yeah, that could be cool. So that's what I did. Now you can see, this is a technique I do a lot in this series. I use procedural objects to change the shape of decals to make them fit within these weirdly shaped lots. And the same can be done with buildings and other things as well. And that way you can make everything look so much more realistic. Because when you look at things in real life, you're never going to have just straight edges. You're never going to have these 90 degrees angles everywhere. There's more organic shapes in real life. And if you want to capture that, you need to do stuff like this. And sometimes there might be an empty lot somewhere, right? And I think those kind of little details will really add something to a city. And I did this previously in the series as well, where, you know, a part that's now not existent anymore. But that was that sort of like abandoned house that I did. And we'll do more of that in the future. Don't don't worry because I love abandoned places, so we'll definitely do some more of that. But I think it just is, is something that really adds to, you know, adds to a series or a city in general. It, it really l makes it just look a lot more realistic. And the same thing is with what I'm doing right here with the foliage. Like, you can see I put so many different layers of foliage on top of each other. And one might even say, like, why did you paint the gravel there first if you're going to cover it entirely with decals? Good question. Like, uh, same. It's a, it's a really good question. And the same can be said for some of the foliage because I put some grass there and then later on top of that there's bushes that almost entirely hide the grass again. But it is that small little detail of putting like the layers of vegetation and the layers of decals or... Well, not decals, I wouldn't layer those, but like the, the textures from the ground and then decals on top of that. That will make things more realistic when you look at things up close. So all those cinematic shots of my, uh, that I usually do where everything is like at street level, those look so good because of all that layering. If I wouldn't do the layering, those shots would look a lot less realistic. So we're getting into the farms now. Let's talk about this. So the layout of the farms is actually going to be the same as what we saw on Google Maps. It's almost entirely identical. Basically, there's a little bit of a difference, but it's very, very similar. So there are these, these ditches on the workshop, ditches, I should say. These are made by Ronix, and they use the detail mod. Now, the detail mod is currently broken, doesn't really work anymore, it's outdated. And Ronix is kind of retiring from making assets for the Steam Workshop. He still makes assets for City Skylines, though, don't worry. He still does them, but he is currently thinking about where he wants to release them they're probably going to be released through a separate website or something where he wants to put the, put things up. And, you know, I totally get it. If you want to know more about it, read one of... Well, I think it was one of the um, uploads he did, the, one of the last ones on this, on this workshop page. There's a whole thing in the description about why he made this decision. But he made these ditches, and because they used the detail mod, you couldn't really use them anymore because the detail mod, like I said, is broken. But somebody made an update that doesn't require this mod, and that means we can now use them again. So that's really cool. They're, they're really good for farm fields, because if you think about it, a farm field needs irrigation, right? So a lot of times farm fields have ditches around them, little kennels, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. So it helps me as well to kind of plan out these farm fields, which is really great. And then I'm using these farm decals. Now, these are farm field decals. They are not functional, obviously, because it's a decal. But they look really good. The farm fields that come with the Industries DLC don't really look that good. I mean, I think we can all agree on that, right? They're good for the vanilla gameplay, but if you want to make something look realistic, they don't really look that good. These, though look pretty realistic. I mean, if you look at them up close, the texture is a little bit low, but it's good enough for me. Maybe later down the series, I might find some good high quality textures that I can put into like procedural objects, then I can just replace them with those. But for now, these will do. And I actually managed to make these fields functional. So somebody 
I'm not entirely sure who it is, I forgot his name, I would have to look it up, made a bunch of industry area farm fields that work with the industry DLC. The farm fields though, and you can see me place them down right now, are completely invisible. So you don't see them, but you can select them and actually select what type of crops or what type of thing is coming out of it. So it's just like those service blocks, those Rico blocks that are have been on the workshop for ages. You can use those if you have like a building and you convert it into a procedural object, which makes it completely not functional anymore. And you can then put one of those little blocks inside of it to make it functional again or trick the game into making it look like it's functional again. And these farm fields work the exact same way. So they actually produce crops. There's ones for a small, small farm field, there's ones for a medium field and for a big field. And you can just place them in here and trucks will spawn there and they will bring goods to warehouses or shops or whatever else they do with this DLC. So it should actually give us a little bit of income. It should provide us some goods for shops and we might be able to use this to later down the line build up some industry in the city that's actually completely functional and that's something that i always try and you when you've been watching this series you know that is that i love detail but i also like to have things somewhat functional so yeah i'm really glad that that worked out so right now i'm building the little farming community you can see we're using dirt roads the dirt road right now that you're seeing is not the final one that I'm going to use. I used this one, was the best one I had at that moment in the game. I put those muddy decals on top of it, but I didn't really like it. I think the muddy decals are a little bit too dark for how bright the dirt road is. It, it kind of looks like the dirt road is a really dry dirt road, but then there's mud on top of it, which would indicate that it has just rained, which looks a little bit odd. And it kind of looks from a distance as well. It looks a little bit like just weird smudges on top of that road. So I wasn't really happy with it. I went onto the workshop and I looked for a different one. And I found actually it's the exact same road, but then with a different texture made by Ronix as well. And it's like a grassy rural road, which is just like two tire tracks with grass around it. And it looked so good for this area. So in just a little bit, you'll probably see that all of those roads have suddenly changed to that nice here nice looking grassy road and i think it just looked a lot better so we're gonna end up using that and uh it, it really make this area just stand out a lot more so i'm making these uh, little fields here as well this is like i said a farming community and this field in general that i'm making right now I, i've detailed this off camera but this is a, a cow field and in here i actually placed a little kettle field or what is it cattle farm block which also came with that same pack and that means that that little field is producing animal products which again is going to be very helpful because that means we can use that to maybe build up some small industry it's not going to be a lot of animal products but i'll place some warehouses here as well so over time those animal products are going to be shipped to the warehouse and they're going to be stored there so industry will be able to use that as well. And we'll probably make a lot more farms in the future going forward as well. I'm building this area quite far uh, to the outside of the map. Which means that this whole area is going to be surrounded with farms. Most of those will probably be just purely decorational, not really functional. But as the series goes on and the demand for industry grows, we can then also put more of those invisible farm fields in the farm fields that are just purely decoration to make them functional and and up the amount of crops that we produce or up the amount of um, farming products or animal products that we produce so yeah that's going to be hopefully a lot of fun in the future now we're nearing the end of the farm area at this point so it's mostly just detailing from here on i'm going to leave you with some music until we get to the next section which is making the residential area
So it's time for residential. Right now we're starting to work a little bit on expanding the population of this little area. So our little town is slowly growing. We are currently at 92 citizens, but we need more. So this little area is just part of me just increasing the population with some extra residential areas. And this is just going to be a start to the town. Now, we're not going to make too much residential here today. I'm just going to have this play and have you see how I do this basically but um yeah I'm uh, still working on the mods list and the asset list because I know there are going to be people that are going to ask about this I'm still working on them I have basically completed them in a way they're kind of presentable but I haven't made them public yet and I won't with this episode I think this episode by itself is already enough so it they will probably come out at some point but I'm not going to have me be influenced by anybody asking for it, so just putting that out there. If you think I'm just going to put a comment in the comments right now saying I want the mod list right now or else you're a piece of shit or something along those lines, which some people have done in the past. I'm not going to be influenced by that, so I'm just releasing it whenever I feel like it's ready to be released. There are a lot of assets that have changed and a lot of mods that have changed, so currently the, the collections are presentable, but they are definitely not the a good presentation of what I currently use and that's basically the reason why I figured it wasn't time yet to put them out yet. I want to make sure that at least the mods list only has mods that I actually currently use and that is simply not the case. So if anybody of you has a question though and this is what I always try to say is like if you have a question about a particular mod or a particular asset that you see me use you are free to put a question in the comments and I am more than willing to help you out with something if your question is, you know, a question I can answer. And if it's a question that doesn't take me a lot of, you know, a lot of extra work, then I'm willing to, you know, look something up for you and, 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 and give you an answer that probably will help you. Sometimes though, especially with modding stuff, I get a lot of questions about stuff and a lot of times when people seem to get angry when I give them an answer, and this is not say, not blaming anybody, by the way, but sometimes people do get angry for some reason. And I feel like a lot of times when I just look at what happens, it's very simple to explain. It's just sometimes when 
you play very heavily modded, the answer is not going to be an easy one to, you know, do. Like, if you ask, like, how do I do this? And I give you an answer that involves, well, doing a lot of work, then sometimes that's just what you need to do to get to that result. Like, a lot of the stuff that I do in this game is, is very time-consuming. And sometimes people think, oh, I just need to do something like this and it's going to be there, right? It's going to be done really quickly. But a lot of times it's not. It's ju it just takes a lot of time. And part of why I can play like this is also because I put a lot of time into looking into what assets I need, what mods do I need, how do these mods work. And that is not something I can, you know, give to somebody. I can hand you a list of assets and I can hand you a list of mods, but that by itself won't really be the thing that makes you build like this. And when I started playing this game, I also didn't, you know, went out and search for a collection of somebody and just subscribe to it and thought like, hey, that's what I need. No, what I did when I started modding this game, and I had never modded a game before, I went onto the Steam Workshop and I started searching for what I would think fit my theme. And I think that is partly also why I can play the way I do. So, like I said, I'm more than happy to help people. I'm more than willing to make a mods and asset list and put that out there at some point but let me do it on my own pace so that i can you know make sure that the collection is helpful to people and it's not going to be a collection that because i just know like if, if it's not helpful to people or if people just going to see like this gigantic thing that just contains stuff that is not even japanese or because there is stuff like that like there's there's like leftover buildings from before there were a lot of Japanese assets and, you know, sometimes I would just put like Russian buildings in there as well because at that time that was the closest what we had. So, yeah, you know, I want to make sure these collections are presentable. That's just basically the one thing that I guess I can say about this. So, enough about that. Um, they will be there at some point. If you have any questions, just let me know. So, here you can kind of see what I meant as well with the doing the shorter type of episodes where I may maybe just tackle a single garden or a single street, I'm really putting a lot of detail in a couple of the houses in this area. I figured this was going to be an area where we're going to do some cinematics. It's pretty close to the highway as well, which is going to be a, a, a place in the future where probably a lot of cinematics will be shot. So it's good to put some extra detail into at least some of the gardens here so that it looks a little bit nicer and we can do some cinematics there. Now, it also helps to fill up some of the some of the leftover areas within the block that might not be perfectly square. Like, if you have a bunch of houses in the block and the, the block isn't exactly square, like this one, it has a little bit of a, a slanted edge to it. It really helps if you use those lots. Just fill it up as much as you can with regular houses and that, that are already detailed. And then use those last leftover areas that are sort of like a different shape to put your own custom garden in. And if you're done with that, it's going to look completely seamless. It almost looks as if it's just a single asset just plopped down there. That's just an, an asset with a lot of detail. But it's completely custom and it really makes these areas work so much better. This is another great example. Like, it's along the main street, so there's going to be cinematics here that we're going to shoot. And you want to make that look good. So just put some decals in there, put some, you know, fences and little walls and other details that you would see in a garden, little planters here and there, detail it a little bit with some, some bushes and some other stuff, and maybe put a little car parking area there. Like, I put some carports in there as well in some of the gardens, and a lot of these carports are functional, so actual, you know, cars will drive around and find a parking spot in there, so that's also really nice to have. And it just makes it so much more realistic and and that's the one thing that kind of comes back in my cities or in my builds i should say because right now i i don't think we can properly call this a city yet but in my builds the, the one thing that comes back it's it, it's all about making this look as realistic as i can right that's the 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 kind of the theme that i always go for and making it look as realistic as i can without sacrificing too much of the functionality of things. And I think I'm succeeding quite a bit on that, and I don't want to toot my own horn, but since the last episode, I put quite a bit of time into... Uh, when I was getting back into the game, I should say, I was 
putting in quite a bit of time into the graphics side of things. And I did a couple of changes to the graphics, so it looks a little bit different from the previous episode. One of the things in particular is that it looks a little bit sharper. I played around a little bit with some of the settings, and while I was doing the, the, the mods as well and working around with the new changes in mods, I was able to get rid of some mods and I was able to replace some things with other mods. And within that, I also decided to see how good can I make this game look? Now, I don't have a really good graphics card. I, I use a, an old GTX 1060, so I'm definitely up for an upgrade, but it's just, it, it hasn't been easy, right, to get a new graphics card, and especially now with all the prices increasing everywhere again, and just in general, you know, economies are not really in the best shape at the moment, so it's not, it's not been the, the best moment to upgrade for me. So I'm making do with what I have. So I'm using a 1060, and that is what I use and what I have been using up until now for all of these builds. One of the things that I tried, I wanted to make this game look better, like I said, and I played this game on 1080p. One of the problems with that is, is that the aliasing is really bad, and what that is really easy to see on is, like, sharp edges are also always going to look like jagged edges, right? They're going to have these really ugly pixelated edges. And that's a problem this game has been plagued by forever. But I decided to try out if I could, because I was always using dynamic resolution to upskill the game. So that upskills the game and I would use like 200, 250%, sometimes 300%. And I would get rid of some of those edges a little bit. But it was always really taxing on my GPU. So I thought, can I do that better? And I was actually able to do it in a different way. So I'm using my video card now to upscale the game to 4K. So the game is actually running on a 4K resolution, but on a 1080p screen. I record the cinematics in 1080p, but because it's running in 4K, those ugly edges are now a lot less noticeable and they look a lot better. And then on top of that, I still use dynamic resolution, but at like 150 to 200%, and that looked sharper than what I had before. The one problem I had though still was the flickering of some of the some of the faces. Most most noticeably when there's a, a phase of a building, so let's say a, one side of a building or a roof, for instance, directly facing the sun. If that would happen, then a lot of times those would start to flicker and that would look really ugly when you would record your cinematics. And I was able to fix that with render it. So I used render it and I before I would use the which which aliasing did I use? I think it was the post process effects aliasing that I was using up until now, but I swi switched that around for the TAA aliasing in render it, which at first made everything flicker and I was like, okay, that's not going to work, but then I saw some people talking about it, you need to tweak it. And if you tweak it right, you can get it to look a lot better. And it will also make those jagged edges look better. And I tried it out and I was actually able, by tweaking the settings a little bit, to get it to look a lot better. Um, the edges look better as well, but the one downside of it was that everything also got a little bit more blurry because of the aliasing, the anti-aliasing, the TAA that I applied. But then with reshade, which is so like an additional piece of software that allows you to inject shaders into the game's code. With that, I was able to add an additional layer of sharpening to the game afterwards. So after this TAA anti-aliasing, or what is that, temporal anti-aliasing, I believe. After that, I added the reshade sharpening, and with that, it actually looked sharper than when I just used the post-process effects anti-aliasing. So, yeah, it's been a little bit of a change, but in graphics it looks better, and it runs better as well. So, I think that has to do because I use less mods now than I did before for the graphics side of things. And some of the things I replaced with Reshade, and I could do that now, I guess with less steps than I did it before, so it's just a little bit less taxing on my, on my GPU. And that is really good, it looks a lot better now, I think, and I think just in general it just looks sharper. And that's always a good thing. So I think we are kind of nearing the end of the episode. Yeah, we're getting close. Let's say about eight, 
more minutes of me just building stuff. I'm just gonna leave you guys with some more music until the rest of the episode is over.
So that's gonna be it for this episode. Now I'm gonna name this little town Maebashi, which is named after the same area that I took inspiration from that you saw earlier on Google Street View on those little shots that I made. It's actually called Maebashi Minami in real life. I think that's just because there's two towns there, one called Maebashi and one called Minami. And those are sort of like surrounded around this highway exit that I made here as well, that I copied, I guess. So that's what I named this town. I might ask you guys in the future for more town name suggestions or other suggestions for like names of districts or other things that we're going to build. I want to keep the names realistic though. So for that reason, I decided to just take the, the same name as what it has in real life. I might do that going forward in the series as well. I have some ideas of things that I want to build in the future episodes. So like I said, that's that was it for this episode. I hope you liked it and I hope you didn't lose complete track or interest in my channel. I'm going to try to do more of these, as I said. I'm not sure what the upload schedule is going to be like, but you can always follow me on Twitter, which is at Artifacts Gaming. All the links are, by the way, in the description as well. So if you want to see more and know more, you can always find that there. That's going to be it for real now this time. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any suggestions of what you want to see me build in the future, let me know in the comments. And without that, let's go into the final cinematics. I see you all in the next one. Peace.